the Golden State Warriors have moved on. But combined with that, this made a whole bunch of really good moves, such as signing um, D'Anthony Melton, uh, getting Kyle Anderson in a signing trade, um, and then also another one which is still unknown because it hasn't been actually finalized, but most likely obtaining Buddy Heald. And then lastly, which is the first move technically, uh, the signing trade with Clay, uh, with Clay Thompson. So I just want to go over those and talk about how the Warriors have moved on uh, due, to these, due to these moves. So with the first move, we'll talk about also the Clay trade. That's probably the most significant one. The Clay trade and the Buddy Heald uh, trade that's kind of there. I don't know. It's, it's still not finalized, but assuming it is, um, it, sig it signifies that the Warriors have moved on. So yeah, the Clay trade. Let's start with that. So as we know, Clay Thompson signed um, a three-year, $50 million deal with the Dallas Mavericks, leaving the Golden State Warriors after, like, what, 13 years? The dynasty's now ended and all of that, which is very sad. But then um, we saw this a sign trade, obviously, because that's only when the Dallas Mavericks could be able to actually fit him with the cap space that they – the lack of cap – the lack of cap space – the lack of cap space that they had at that time. And, um, yeah, that's the only way they could actually get Clay Thompson. And, yeah, it happened because the Warriors obviously had to do a sign trade with him, and they wanted to do him right. That's what it was. And also, they wanted to get some value back in return as well. Because when you know you're going to lose a player, the worst thing to do is to get no value out of them. Even if you can still get a little bit of value, it's still better than nothing. That's exactly what the Warriors did. So, in the trade. Um, yeah, Dallas got, obviously, Clay Thompson. And then Golden State got two second-round picks. And um, one was from Dallas, from what I remember. And the other one was from Charlotte or something like that. Uh, my bad if I you know, was mistaken. And also, Charlotte got Josh Green. But for Golden State, they pretty much just maximized the amount of value they got. They could have literally got absolutely nothing, but instead, they worked out um, a trade, obviously, a signed trade, because that's the only way he could have, Clay Thompson could have been on the Warriors, and then they got two second round picks in return. And those second round picks can also be used for the Warriors to obviously upgrade the roster, get more depth, and stuff like that. And why I say the mood on is because obviously Clay was a cornerstone of the franchise, and now he's gone. And now they need someone like Clay Thompson because that's what they're missing. And they've been used to having him for, look, 13 years, someone like him who was, um, generally speaking besides the last few years was a elite 3 and d guard and now they're missing that but especially the shooting besides the defense because the defense has been gone let's be honest the defense has been gone for the last few years like last two three seasons so the main thing I'm looking for now is to replace that shooting and i guess get a little bit of that scoring back as well and with that comes in the buddy healed uh comes in with uh buddy healed comes in with that and then yesterday we got a report from sham saying that the Golden State Warriors are in serious talks on the sign trade deal to acquire Buddy Heald. Um, Warriors and 76ers have been in deep discussions working to finalize the deal for one of the NBA's best three-point shooters. So um, last year, Buddy Heald had a, a down year. But still, generally speaking, again, the numbers will lie. Like if he has one bad year or one down year, that doesn't mean he's going to be like a bum for the rest of his career like playing like that. But people, some people have that in their mind. But he is still a good shooter, and that's what they're going to need. And Golden State, Steph Curry especially, him playing Steph Curry is going to literally open up his game. It happens to everyone. It's going to create open looks for him because you know, Steph gets triple team. You've seen this like, quadruple team. It's like ridiculous. Like, have you guys seen those clips of Curry where he literally gets the ball and all the players are focused on like looking at him and their body shifting towards him as in like they're ready for him. They're about to like go at him as soon as like he even comes remotely close to them. Right? So Steph always has all the tension on him. And with that, Buddy Heal, who's obviously a great shooter, an elite shooter, uh, be that he's gonna get a whole bunch of open looks, especially from three. And the Warriors, obviously, we know they love uh, uh, obviously playing motion and shooting threes and just playing quick pace because Curry runs the tempo and all that. So with that, Buddy Hill fits in perfectly because you're gonna get that shooting uh, back that you missed from Clay Thompson, and also you're gonna get not as many points because Buddy Hill's not as much as a uh, good scorer as Clay. That's my opinion. I don't know. Some people might disagree, but that's what I'd say. So yeah, because he's not as much a good scorer, he's still gonna miss out on the scoring. But they are making the recouping off other uh, players in the sign, which we'll get into later. But yeah, if this trade does go down, it's gonna be huge for the Warriors. I think the Warriors have been cooking. But yeah, they've essentially found their Clay Thompson replacement, which is obviously a downgrade still from Clay because Buddy Hill's defense is absolute dirt. I'm just saying how it is. It's like he's not even trying. He's just, he's just kind of there, man. He's just kind of existing, I guess, um, when he's on defense. But uh, yeah, the shooting is what you're replacing. That's the main thing. And obviously, he'd be starting besides Steph. At least that's what I assume. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe think that local state uh, Warrior fans. But that's what I assume. And yeah, you're going to shoot him back. Another Splash Brother in the sense. But I guess a way uh, worse version of him. 
a way worse version of him. That's essentially what it is. But yeah, that's what I mean in the sense of the wars moving on, because obviously Clay's gone, so now it's like in a bit of a new era, I'd say. Because uh, Clay's gone, and you're getting Buddy healed in order to play as Clay Thompson. That's pretty much what it is. And this move is actually good. The Warriors, I don't know what the deal is going to be itself, but they'll probably use at least one of the second round picks that they got, and then I don't know who else will be involved in the trade, to be honest. So, yeah, let me know what you think about that. And also, we saw last night, with the Warriors also, before the Shams uh, tweet about uh, Buddy Heald, saw from Woj, uh, that the Warriors actually did um, another trade, which was for Kyle Anderson. And Kyle Anderson can, uh, from what I remember, he can shoot the three. I don't know what his numbers are, but he can shoot. If Obviously, we know his jump shot's slow. We know he plays slow. So it is going to be interesting to see how he fits in and with the Warriors system because he plays fast. But I'm saying this to my friends. I think the Warriors are going to change the system a bit just because they lost Clay Thompson. He was like a focal point in their offense. He was like, yeah, like one of the main reasons why the Warriors offense worked, like why they can play so quick and stuff like that was because of Curry and Clay. Because they were just, their jump shots are so quick. They could literally just move so quick like that. Like, bro. When they do the pump fake into the shot, it's ridiculous. Like especially back in like back in the day, yeah, they just run so much too. Like off ball, it's, it's ridiculous. Like, uh, yeah, that's like you, you're not gonna be able to like you know replace that. Even if Buddy healed, obviously, it, like that's not gonna work. You're not gonna be yeah, that's not gonna be uh, replaceable. But they are trying to get more people like stretch the floor and just depth in general. And then they got Kyle Anderson who can also stretch the floor, play defense. You know he played he had good games in um uh what's it called playoffs this year we saw that and um yeah i think this is a good decision honestly this is a good decision to get him and all they give was yeah second round pick swap and cash and we'll say like a three-year 27 million dollar deal which is um what is that 27 total by three it's nine million and buddy healed what is he? i don't know what buddy Heald's contract is but assuming uh they did use a trade exception somehow i don't know i thought the trade exception worked like where you can only use it in one deal, you can't like split it, you know what I mean? Because that would kind of be like exploiting it. But apparently people were saying that you're able to split it, and then like you can use a trade exception on like more than one deal. So if that's the case, a $60 million uh, trade exception that the Warriors got, they need to split that and use $9 million obviously on um, Kyle Anderson, and then the rest, I guess Buddy Heald, I don't know what Buddy Heald's exact contract is, but if it's $7 million, then I guess that fit, uh, works perfectly. But yeah, besides, I'm not sure about that. But getting Kyle Anderson for literally nothing is, you know, good. And the Timberwolves have made their own, um, what's called, the Timberwolves have made their own uh, signings of free agency to pretty much replace Kyle Anderson. But, yeah, I'm not really sure why the Wolves did this, but maybe because of uh, cap. That's probably why, because they are getting up there. The amount they're paying, um, Rudy Gobert and then Ant, that's, uh, yeah. And Cat as well, and then you also got Mike Conley. It's adding up now. And because of pretty much like the CBA rules, the second apron, you're trying to trying to save as much as you can because otherwise that's uh, it's gonna hurt your pockets, man. Honestly, the owners are not gonna be happy about that. And uh, yeah, especially when you're a contender too, you get like the Suns. We've seen what's happening. Suns. The Suns are literally paying for uh, what they did. Have those three max contracts there. It's tough. It's rough out there for them. But anyways, yeah, the Warriors is good. He's gonna fit. In, I I think he's gonna fit in, uh, pretty well because I think the Warriors are gonna change the system a bit now without Clay because he was one of the main. Reason why the system was like that. Obviously, Curry was the main reason, but Clay was also another reason why. So now I think they changed their philosophy a bit on offense because this is a new era and they haven't had success in a while. I know it wasn't because of their philosophy itself, but like, you know, obviously the players, the roster they have isn't good enough, but still, like, you gotta switch it up and see what happens. You know, just test other things out now, especially since you lost Clay. It's a new era. And lastly, this is probably the first, this might have even been my bad, this might have even been before the Clay Thompson signing. Um, I'm not sure, but I started before the Clay Thompson signed trade because I was taking a bit. But the Warriors actually signed Danthony Melton to a one-year, $12.8 million deal with the Golden State Warriors. Man, I can't talk, bro. This is such a good deal. Um, I didn't even know the Warriors had like their mid-level exception, which is this would be right, 12.8. I'm pretty sure around there, maybe a little bit less. But either way, they gone for a really good deal. I know some one-year deals, so obviously. It's just that one of those deals where they entice up a whole bunch of money, and then he just won the one-year deal, which is what they gave him, because they didn't want to do anything else either, because I don't, I don't even think they can. Maybe they could. I don't think so. But yeah, they just gave him that. And also for him, the reason why he signed it is because he's going to show off his skill and then get that big payday next season, because he didn't get it this year. And also, a chance to win a championship, I guess, even though Warriors are kind of you know not there right now, because they're having all these like things going off the roster. The roster's not good enough. Um, but yeah, they did save. Oh, that's what it was. 
I don't know how I forgot about this, bro. They literally, because of CP3, they waived a rice contract was some guarantee. They saved a whole bunch of money from that, right? Because the contract's like 30 million. Yeah, and then obviously they're going to try to offload Wiggins as well. So now they're, yeah, like, we'll say words, they're, they're kind of cooking. I'm not going to lie. Like, just from, like, the, like, you know, the financial aspect of it, too. Besides the sign, the signs are already, like, cooking, bro. Like, the signs are so good. It was looking kind of bleak for the Warriors at one point, but I was understanding what they were doing with Fossey, the salary cap relief. But the signs are also good, too, and the salary cap uh, changes as well. Yeah, like I said, this is a one-year, $12.8 million deal. It's a proven deal, pretty much, and this game will wish money to entice him to come there. And DeAnthony Melton, if you don't know, especially when you know, his Sixers run, though, and then I think before that he was on the Grizzlies, he's, like, one of the best, like, he comes in the start, like the starting lineup sometimes, and then other times he's off the bench. But either way, he's like he cooks. He always finds his way there, and he needs to do a little bit of everything. Like I love his defense. He can actually shoot the ball. He has a whole bunch of games where he absolutely goes off, just cooks. Like he needs to do everything, and he has size too, which helps. He's a uh, what is he like six four, six five? I might be mistaken, but he's decently tall, and he has a uh, I say decently long arms. He can play pretty good defense too, and he's just like he can do a little bit of everything. And I remember when I'd see him um, every time we'd face him. My first team's Raptors. Just absolutely cook us. Like he's just annoying to face. Like he's just one of those players that you don't you hate you hate facing him, but you love having him on your team. That's one of the type of players he is. Because he can literally literally do a little bit of everything. You can also do his playmaking is pretty underrated underrated too. Because he has games where yeah. When, when you need a someone to step up, he's there. He's literally there. So he could yeah, good at a little bit of everything. So this is a good sign for the Warriors. They're gonna get um another good guard. And he can play a little bit small forward too. So yeah, this is a good. That's good for the Warriors. And Kyle Anderson, obviously, like I said, that's another good pickup. That's underrated. I know people don't think it'll work just because of the tempo of the Warriors and their uh, philosophy in terms of their playing style. But I think they're going to change it now just because it's a new era. And they just got to, they got to make changes, man. What else? Like, yeah, like your roster is like, it is what it is. You got to do other changes and try to see what works, what doesn't. And if it doesn't work, go back to something else. Go back to what you're doing. I guess we got to try different things at least. And if the Buddy Hill trade goes through, depending on what it is, I, don't, I think they might just... I think Six was trying to get rid of him just to uh, um, just create some cap space maybe, so they can sign someone else. But yeah, depending on what the deal is, I think the Warriors are gonna get another steal, honestly. And the Clay Thompson trade, you had to do it. Uh, you literally could have got nothing for him, but they did him right and got him to where he wanted to go. And they got you know something returned, two second round, two second round picks, which weren't even guaranteed to get anyways. You know what I mean? So that's a W. So Golden State Warriors, Golden State Warriors, all the moves they made, they're good. And this is just a turning point in the franchise now, where. They lost one of their key players for the last 13 years, let's say, right? That's how long he's been in the Warriors. And now you just got to make adjustments. You got to move on, right? You can't be looking back at this, like, just dwelling on it. You got to move on. And that's exactly what they're doing with these um, signings, especially, uh, obviously, the Clay Thompson trade and then the Buddy Heald signing, or the Buddy Heald trade, sorry, which I'm assuming is going to go through um, probably in the next few days.